The gospel is totally Christian. The gospel is not Judeo-Christian. We do not have a Judeo base, Christian. Any person who worships the true God and our Lord Jesus Christ is this. He or she is a saint in Christ Jesus. Nothing to do with anything else. It doesn't matter if she goes to church. It doesn't matter at all. Probably better. It doesn't matter what denomination she is. It's immaterial. It's external. It doesn't matter if they have choirs in relation to true worship. It still has to do with she is a saint or he is a saint in Christ Jesus. Nothing to do with the choirs. Nothing to do with the music. Nothing to do with the organisation. Nothing to do with whether you're with 10,000 people or 1,000 or 10. It is you personally are a saint in Christ Jesus. And that person, he or she or you or I, complies with the gospel. The gospel has begun by Jesus Christ not the gospel you generally hear. The gospel as begun by Jesus Christ. The apostle as conveyed totally by the apostle Paul. We have to comply with that gospel to be able to worship as we should worship. Because if we comply with that gospel, we will worship as the gospel says we are to worship and not as our pastor says we are to worship and not as the, our denomination says we are to supposedly worship. There used to be a saying amongst the Pentecostals when I was young, some people's prayers don't go any higher than the ceiling. I wonder how, the so, how far the so-called worship of most churches reaches. Does it go any further than the ceiling? A good question to ask. What is not counted as important is external ways. God is not interested in external ways. And such are the ways that people use in the main today. We all did. Even though we had the touch of the Spirit, even though we had good hymns, even though we had good gospel sermons, even though there were people saved and touched by the Lord, filled with the Holy Ghost and healed, we generally followed external worship. There'd be a choir there always be the musical instruments, the piano, the organ, the violins, the cornets, the saxophones. There'd always be a song service following the, the hymns and the songs that people composed. Now personally, because there was nothing better, I thank God for every church I was in, where there was the touch of God, where there was certain truth, where there was worship, where there was healing, where there was salvation, but not once was I in a church that followed totally the ways of the Holy Spirit. When writing, the Apostle Paul spoke and wrote of himself and all believers in the grace and spirit of the gospel. That's what he said. And it was always based on the believer's union with Christ. Union with Christ is internal. Union with Christ is not external. Union with Christ has nothing to do with the fact that you go to church. Unless you heard about it and experienced it, in church. Union with Christ is a personal, spiritual 
union with Christ to such an extent that it is Christ and you united in spirit. And there's a wonderful verse in Corinthians that speaks about that. How wonderful it is to be united with Christ. Now the Apostle Paul also said it had to do with the communion with the Holy Spirit. Not communion, eating bread or drinking wine. Communion with the Holy Spirit. He says this when he writes in his epistles and in a certain particular epistle. So this narrows any definition that believers understand of the gospel and worship. It narrows the definition. Because the Apostle Paul does not say anything about if you belong to a good denomination. He does not say anything about if you have a good pastor. He does not say, and let me say, as one looks back, of course there have been thousands of good pastors, what we would consider good, but it has nothing to do with this pastor or that pastor. Unless he's told you that you had to have union with Christ, it has to be in the love of God. That's what he said. In the love of God. Not in a specific church. Not in a specific denomination. Not with a specific doctrine. We must have the right doctrine, but the doctrines are the doctrines of the New Testament that generally are not formulated as the total doctrines of any denomination. Paul spoke in Philippians of two classes of people. He talked about the dogs. He said the dogs. He called them the dogs. He said they are mutilators of the flesh. In other words, they cut themselves like people do with tattoos. It's forbidden in the Old Testament. But he was talking about circumcision of the flesh. And he was saying that there are dogs who would come into your church. They still cut the flesh in the circumcision of their body. He called them dogs. Do you know that millions of Christians don't understand that? And maybe I didn't once, for sure. They don't understand that they are with dogs if the people they love and associate with and follow and esteem and applaud use circumcision of the flesh. Christians do not use circumcision of the flesh. As far as I know, I don't know any denomination that tells the mothers and fathers you have to have your little boy circumcised. I've never heard of it. But there are people who circumcise it all over the world. They are dogs, according to the Apostle Paul. And yet, most of the church loves those people whom they think are the people of God. People of God will not act like dogs or be dogs or cut their flesh in circumcision. Now Jesus called the Gentiles dogs. You remember there was a, a woman who came to him for healing for her daughter and he said to her, it is not a good idea to throw the crumbs to the dogs. She knew what he was talking about because the Jews called the Gentiles dogs. And so Jesus was saying, well, the Jews have healing from through in the Old Covenant, and you are the dogs. They cannot give healing to you. He was kind of making a play upon words. And she said, yes, but the dogs eat the crumbs under the table. And he thought that was great faith and healed her daughter. So here is Paul 
using the same thing. Who was he speaking about? He was speaking about the Judaism in the Gospel. Who could make it Judeo-Christian. The Gospel is totally Christian. The Gospel is not Judeo-Christian. We do not have a Judeo base. Christian. People who believed in Jesus were first called Christians in Antioch. They were never called Judeo-Christians. They were called Christians. It's all about Christ. So then and now, we are to have nothing to do with the people who circumcise and cut with the flesh. But there is a circumcision that includes only those who have a renewal in the spirit of their being to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. When they believed in Christ Jesus, God counted their carnal nature to be dead in the grave with Christ. God counted their carnal nature to be buried in the in the grave with Christ. God counted the fact that when he was raised from the dead, they were raised in newness of life with him spiritually. And you find it all about this in Romans 6. So we are to worship God in the spirit. It's a spiritual worship. It's not a carnal worship. It's not an external worship. It has nothing to do with dancing. It has nothing to do with jumping. It has nothing to do with a load of musical instruments. It has nothing to do with the fact that somebody is up there beating the beat with his hands or leading in supposed worship. It's a worship in the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. Lord, send the power of the Holy Ghost amongst us so that we are filled with the Holy Ghost and worship as you will. Now the Apostle Paul also said it had to do with communion with the Holy Spirit, not communion, eating bread or drinking wine.